We should recall that from yesterday, the distance formula was derived from the uh, Pythagorean theorem, um, where essentially what we had was this was c, um, and it was equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Um, if we square root both sides of the Pythagorean theorem, which looks like this, um, then we get this here. Um, so the distance formula um, shows us the run squared plus the rise squared all being square rooted and that's equal to the distance between two points. Um, that's all just kind of a little bit of a review from yesterday. Today I'm going to show you some uh, application, um, uh, some examples of solving them and my systematic approach to doing that. So here are three problems. Um, and I've selected some that have um, liberal use of the negative symbol um, so that we can make sure that we treat that correctly. But um, these three problems uh, I will solve one at a time. Um, first of all, let's use the distance formula and set that up so that we can um, see what we're substituting and where. Um, before we even do that, we should probably label our points. Let's start with problem six. In problem six, uh, we've got two ordered pairs. Um, and so I'm going to label the x and y coordinates of each and subscript those as ones and twos. So in the first ordered pair, I have x1 here, I have y1 there. So that's the x and y pair, and they're both from the first ordered pair, so they have subscripts of ones. Um, the second ordered pair is going to be x2 and y2. Um, and so those are the subscripts for those because um, they come from the second um, ordered pair. Now the distance formula, which looks like this, needs to have those values substituted in place of the x1, y1, uh, x2, y2 um, need to be put in the correct positions. So sometimes it's useful just to copy this down next. Um, so label was first, and then copy the, the distance formula down a second. Then do what I call write down the skeleton. And the skeleton is um, all of the bits and pieces like the square root symbol and the square sign and the subtract and the parentheses and all of those. Um, without the x2, y2s, all of those numbers being in place um, so that there's space for you to plug in the numbers where they go, like this. So what I have here is the distance formula with all of the x2, uh, x1, y2, y1 all missing so that I can substitute the numbers from the problem in those spots. The reason that this is important is because those minus signs from the formula need to be there so that when I do the substitution, I might see minus signs back to back reminding me that it's supposed to be add the positive instead of subtract the negative. That's just going to make it easier and help me mess up less. So noticing uh, that right here I've got my x2, so I need to come up here and find my x2, which is negative 2, and I substitute that in place of where x2 goes. Uh, the next number should be um, x1. Uh, so here's x1. It's going to go in this spot x1 is 1, that goes there. Uh, my next number that I'm going to use is uh, the y2. I come up here and look for y2, that's the 4, so that goes here. Um, and then the last number that I'm going to use is the y1. y1 is here, that's the negative 6, so that gets substituted here. Again, notice that I just put a minus sign in right next to the other minus sign. The first minus sign that was already there was from the formula. The one I just substituted in was from substituting the y1 value. Uh, now I need to simplify this using the order of operations. So there are groups here. In fact, there are three groups. One of them is the entire radicand, everything underneath the square root symbol. The other two groups are the rise and the run that are being squared, so the stuff within the parentheses. Um, so I need to simplify all of this. d is equal to the square root of, and I'm going to just put a long square root symbol there because I've got a lot of work that goes underneath here. Negative 2 minus 1 is negative 3. I'm going to put parentheses around that to keep track of this so that if I do ever uh, square this with my calculator or something, uh, my calculator will know that that negative is part of the base that's being squared. So the negative symbol should also be squared so that I should end up with a positive answer when I square that. Um, plus uh, 4 minus negative 6 is going to become plus positive 6, which makes 10. Notice I'm not using parentheses this time because 10 is a positive number, um, so I don't need, need to put parentheses around my base. 
Um, simplifying even further, I get square root of negative 3 squared is 9. Notice that comes out to a positive number. Had I not put my parentheses around that negative 3, I may have forgotten to do that. I might have negative 9 there, and that would really mess up my answer. Uh, plus 10 squared is 100. Um, I can still simplify this in my head. I haven't even needed to pull out my calculator for this entire problem. I get square root 109, which is a perfectly acceptable answer. The only reason that I would give a decimal approximation is if the problem asked for it, and they didn't up here, so I'm good to go, and this is called my final answer. Let's go ahead and look at number 7. Again, in number 7, I want to label my um, x's and y's. So this is x1, this is y1, that's x2, and this is y2. Um, I've already got my distance formula copied down and the skeleton in place, um, so now I'm going to substitute values. So x1, uh, sorry, it shouldn't start with x1, it should start with x2. It comes from over here, that's a 4, substituting. Um, x1 is here, that comes from, uh, let me color coordinate this. x1 comes uh, from there, that's the 8, so that's going to go in this spot. Um, so there's the 8. Um, y2 comes from here, that's the negative 3. And y1 comes from there, and that's the negative 7. Again, notice in this problem, I again have negative back-to-back -back like that, the minus negative 7. That's going to become plus positive 7 in just a moment when I simplify. So now I'm going to simplify uh, square root of, giving myself a long square root symbol because there's a lot of work underneath there. 4 minus 8 is negative 4. I'm going to square that. Uh, and then negative 3 minus negative 7 becomes plus positive 7, so that's positive 4. And now I simplify that, and I get square root of negative 4 squared is 16. Positive 4 squared is also 16, so the answer here is going to be the square root of 32. Again, I'm not going to uh, use my calculator to get the decimal approximation because the problem didn't ask for it. But that calculator step should be um, pretty straightforward. Uh, next problem, number 8. There's not really anything new in this problem here. Um, I'm just going to talk you through all the pieces um, and hope that you know what to do next. So first thing I should do is... Pause, 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 I'm waiting. Uh, you should have said label my um, coordinates. So I'm going to put x1, y1, x2, y2. Sorry that my uh, my problem is so small. Um, normally my writing should be the same size as the problem. Um, the second thing you should do is copy down the formula, which is already done. Third thing you should do is write down the skeleton, which is already done. Then you should substitute. Um, so x2 comes from here. That's a 6. What goes in place for x1? x1 is right here, so that's negative 10. Notice this time it's my minus negative is in my run instead of my rise. Um, the next thing is y2, which comes from here. That's a 5. And the last thing is y1, which comes from here. That's a negative 2. This problem has a minus negative in both the rise and the run, so I'm going to have to remember to do plus signs on both of those. Um, finishing the problem with simplifying, uh, 6 minus negative 10 is plus positive 10. That's 16 now. Probably didn't need those parentheses, but it doesn't hurt. 5 minus, 5 minus negative 2 becomes 5 plus 2, um, so that's going to become 7 squared. So I get uh, D equals the square root of 256 plus 49, which simplifies D equals to the square root of 305. And since that's not a perfect square, I'm done with this problem and done with all three problems, actually. Here are two problems for you to try that we'll use as warm-ups tomorrow. Um, these will be your answers for one and two on the warm-ups for tomorrow. Um, and good luck.